Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be discussing on-package memory, a technology that has seen increasing adoption in modern PCs. We'll also examine the underlying business reasons for why some of the newest CPUs have opted not to utilize this technology. On-package memory is a technology where memory chips are directly integrated onto the same substrate as the CPU. It has seen increasing adoption in mainstream PC CPUs recently, such as Apple's M-Series chips and Intel's Lunar Lake, due to several significant benefits. The first key advantage is saving board space. Memory constitutes a large portion of the required wiring from the CPU, which takes up a significant amount of area. Integrating the two with high-density interconnects cuts out the complex, lengthy wiring traditionally found on the motherboard, allowing manufacturers to build much smaller PCs. Space saving is critical for ultra-compact devices like tablets. This configuration is also essential for designs aiming for higher bandwidth, such as quad-channel memory, which doubles the required wiring. Meanwhile, Apple utilizes the benefits of on-package memory in both directions, for space savings in devices like the iPhone, and for extreme bandwidth in their M-Series Max and Ultra chips. Second, it improves performance and power efficiency. The physical distance between the CPU and memory is shortened, which reduces latency and makes the connection less susceptible to noise. This allows for a choice, either achieve much faster data transfer for the same amount of power, or maintain the same speed while reducing power consumption. The third point is the simplification of the motherboard design. Memory involves a high number of pins, or signal lines. With DDR5, there are 288 per channel, and routing these inside the motherboard is a major difficulty, requiring the use of multi-layer PCBs. If on-package memory reduces the amount of memory wiring on the motherboard, no longer need to stack many layers. If a good balance is achieved, this can result in lower costs. As you can see, on-package memory has many technical benefits. In fact, its single greatest drawback has always been the inability to replace or upgrade the memory after purchase. The next topic is why is Panther Lake abandoning on-package memory? Despite these clear advantages, Intel's next-generation CPU, codenamed Panther Lake, is reportedly moving away from its adoption. The reason for this isn't technical, but appears to be purely a matter of business logistics. Past Intel's earnings call included a statement to the effect of, you don't want to have volume memory going through that CPU channel. This remark hints at an underlying issue of inventory management among PC and CPU manufacturers. PC manufacturers often have customizable variations. For example, they might offer a model with CPU A and 16 GB of memory, and another with CPU A and 32 GB of memory. These products are very similar, differing only in memory capacity, and they often cannibalize each other's sales, leading to one selling well and the other lagging. With the standard DMM slot approach, the CPU and memory are sourced separately and can be combined freely. If memory is left over, it can be repurposed for other products. Accumulating inventory isn't a major issue. However, on-package memory, where the CPU and memory are integrated, eliminates this flexibility. If demand forecasts are wrong and an order is mistakenly placed, the OEM could be left with a massive amount of dead stock. While accurate demand forecasting would solve this, the reality of the PC industry makes it complicated. One of these is the nature of PCs as a seasonal product. If you overlay the annual sales trends, you can see a consistent wave every year. Specifically, orders rush in during the holiday season and the back-to-school period. Since consumer orders are concentrated in these short periods, and because PC models are updated annually, we can't afford to sell them slowly over the course of the next year. The key to success is accurately and precisely meeting the demand within these tight timeframes. PC manufacturers want to meet this sudden surge in demand, meaning they want a large supply of necessary components immediately. At the same time, they want to avoid the risk of unsold units, meaning they prefer not to hold excess inventory themselves. Frankly, they'd prefer the CPU manufacturer to bear that inventory risk. The CPU manufacturer is equally concerned about inventory risk. They want to sell off their products as quickly as possible, 
preferring that the PC manufacturer manages the inventory costs and risks. This inherent conflict of interest is exacerbated by on-package memory, as it increases inventory risk. Furthermore, because the price of memory is bundled into the CPU's inventory value, the financial damage from a clearance sale or write-down would be greater. This is the core reason why Intel is moving away from on-package memory. My take is that Intel was aware of this from the beginning. Lunar Lake was originally conceived as a product to target a niche market for small form factor devices, such as tablets. However, when Microsoft abruptly announced the Copilot Plus PC standard, Lunar Lake was the only in-development product from Intel that had a chance of meeting the new specifications. This, I believe, is why it was rushed out to be positioned as a mainstream product. Now, let's consider Apple. We've just outlined the significant business drawbacks, yet Apple continues to successfully use on-package memory. How do they make it work? The reason is that Apple is the manufacturer of both CPU and the final product. They design their M-series chips and manufacture and sell the MacBooks and iMacs that house them. This allows them to tightly coordinate their CPU production plan with their finished product sales plan. Since they control everything from demand forecasting to inventory management centrally, the risk of inventory problems due to misjudged demand is reduced. Moreover, since the opposing players, the CPU manufacturer and the PC manufacturer, are the same company, the blame game that occurs between Intel and its PC partners is eliminated from the start. Finally, let's look at an alternative technology that aims to solve this problem. A new standard called CMM2 has been proposed to offer the best of both worlds. You can think of it as replacing the soldered connection of on-package memory with a LAND grid array, or LGA socket, a flat interface with a grid of contact pads. CMM2 is very thin to save space. It also consolidates the four slots of DMM into a single module, which can reduce the required motherboard footprint by up to 60%. This compact design shortens the signal paths, and the elimination of unused slots prevents signal degradation. The result is improved signal integrity, leading to higher speeds, lower latency, and reduced power consumption. While the modules are replaceable, the single slot design means you have to swap the entire module rather than adding a second one. The LGA-style connection carries a risk of damaged pins, and it requires a specific Torx screwdriver, making it less than ideal for at-home upgrades. For a PC manufacturer, however, who simply needs to install the customer-ordered module at the factory, it is sufficient. Overall, CMM2 can be described as a technology that features characteristics intermediate between DMM slots and on-board or on-package memory solutions. Since memory replacement isn't a frequent operation, the difficulty of replacement isn't a major drawback, and it can generally be treated as an improved method compared to the traditional slot-based approach. Even though CMM2 is an excellent technology, it has yet to see widespread adoption. Personally, as an enthusiast, I would love to see a quad-channel version of CMM2 become available, but there appears to be no sign of that happening anytime soon.